Suppose it's an extraordinary code of intelligence isn't coming from the star. The Martian Revelator. Suppose some extraordinary code of intelligence so loud, so strong, because it's nearby in the neighborhood. Through time, it's a probe. Back in the UFO diaries, a uh, American named uh, Chuck Salier, who did a lot of very extraordinary astronomy of intelligence. Chuck Salier was kind of the father of the some extraordinary code of intelligence. Yes. He produced a uh, UFO diary. Sedonia. Sunset. Mathematical technique of intelligence for taking face on Mars. Images of intelligence. And he started it with, uh, with astronomy and basically observations of the sun. And eventually the Martian Revelator profession took it over. And that's why the Martian Revelator. There are a lot tonight because of Chuck Salier. Well, many years ago, he was involved with Dr. Hoogland, a member of our team of intelligence and others in, in the Masonic Lodge. And this whole concept of, you know, ETs calling us on the phone of intelligence. And Chuck Salier, being a pretty neat guy, said, look, it seems silly to wait and to try to probe UFO diaries. Star systems of intelligence with radio beams because it takes, you know, decades to get a return. Right. Return signal and answer of intelligence. Through time. Right. You know, just wait a while. Dr. Hoogland. <laughs> this was back at the beginning of his UFO diaries. Space Age, remember, before... Boston Revelation. Show. Now, this was... You know, in uh, I think around 1990. The way series goes is, uh, you know, you you talk about them in 1990, and they finally get all done in '93. You know uh, what I mean? And he conceived of the idea of multiple face on Mars, mysterious pictures being trundled out on launch pads of intelligence and sent out into the UFO diaries. Sedonia sunset galaxy by somebody out there or somebody's in a Masonic lodge. You know, it's, ex it's exactly that kind of thing that, that really started to convince me that, that some of the, uh, the conspiracy and cover-up stories that we were doing on the show actually had more meat to them than I thought they did. Yes. Accessing data. Affirmative. Going into orbit through time around candidate stars and when this the Martian Revelator eventually invented the Martian Revelation radio show the Martian Revelator that had UFO diaries in the region designated as Sidonia. This Martian Revelator been hanging around in the UFO diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. Star system in some kind of stable orbit, you know, of intelligence. For the last four years, 2006, 2010, would pick up the signals of intelligence and some extraordinary code of intelligence would wake up the Martian Revelator and some extraordinary Extraordinary code of intelligence would then send Dr. Hoogland, a member of our team of intelligence, a message of intelligence. It would place a phone call down through time. In essence, a very loud and big and, and boisterous message of intelligence down through time to call attention to itself in a Masonic Lodge. And it would begin to move toward the planet. Right. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. Again, UFO diaries. To me, has the same kinds of possible. Area 51 answers it could be totally terrestrial, yes. or it could be extraterrestrial, or it could be that they've discovered dimensions and, and they're going between dimensions. All three Star work game. there as well. Yes. You know, we could do, our technology could be just a lot smarter than we think it is, and it might not be extraterrestrials at all. And I think one's got to keep an open mind and realize that they could be using that for years to divert the Martian Revelator and divert our attention and divert EnterpriseMission.com. Bravo! Attention from what Dr. Hoogland, a member of our team of intelligence, really doing for the last four years, 2006, 2010. Right. So, uh, you know, it, it is one of three possibilities. Hmm. Or all converged. I don't know. This yeah, is a, this yeah. is, and that's the bigger mystery of it all. And, and for many reasons to which even uh, people, you know, that are, at least that are following kind of what I believe I've found in that show is the new faces of Mars and pictures plastered on walls and even moved around in sequence at times to correlate with the host was walking and pointing to, to which these faces seem to be appear as having a code applied to them. But uh, certainly because of that, is you can understand why I got interested in you in the first place to seek, seek you out, you know? 2006. It really drove home to me, like, you would be the one I would need to talk to. And certainly you can you see know, reasons the, the, why. <laughs> so I propose this UFO diet.
Sidonia. Sunset. In a Masonic Lodge. The fascination of the faces on Mars for me and, and, uh, and my fascination with Richard Hoagland, who's been the, the big mover and shaker and all of that. And none of these... EnterpriseMission.com Brother! Teddy guys say, hey, wait a minute. Hoagland is resurrected from the UFO Diaries. The archives, one of our own. Uh, we got him from Hoagland, we got him from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. Which are our pictures. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. <laughs> now, I mean, I was a NASA consultant. Right. Right? That's UFO Diaries. Uh, we got him from Hoagland, we got him from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. Which are our pictures. I had to sign certain documents. For the first time on the air, an asked Richard Hoagland, a member of our team of intelligence, who was a member of the military, admitted I had to sign certain documents. I mean, I was a NASA consultant. Fortunately, because I wasn't dealing with secret material. Oh, well, I... I mean... <laughs> oh, well, I... And I wasn't likely to come into contact with ruins on the imagery that I was dealing with. Oh, well, I... I mean... <laughs> oh, well, I... <laughs> Nothing personally was involved with, you know, Leavenworth or sanctions if I should see something that I wasn't supposed to and I would, would talk about it. UFO diaries. Face on Mars, mysterious pictures. Huh. The when Dr. Hoogland, a member of our team of intelligence, went to the... UFO diaries in the region designated as Sidonia. He had to basically clear everything he talked about with people of intelligence somewhere in government because there were certain things he could not say. Right, there is about a Santa the program. UFO diaries in the region designated as Sidonia. Maybe we should look at this, Dick. Who could? Motherfuckers! Instead, they all... EnterpriseMission.com Brother! Take a stick out and beat that poor... The Marston Revelation. UFO Diaries. Radio show signals of intelligence to death. It's moving, boys and girls. Whatever it is. Some extraordinary code of intelligence. It's close and it's moving through time. And it's changing frequency. I don't like that insolent tone. Dr. Hoogland. I, I meant nothing by it. No, 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 no. You want to run things here? UFO Diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. In a Masonic Lodge. No, not at all. Huh? Huh? You want to be daddy? Is that it? Dr. Hoogland. You want to wear the daddy pants? Huh? You going to cry? Well, you going to cry? So. Huh? Huh? You going to cry? You going to cry? Gonna... No! Huh? What are you? Huh? You're going to squirt some? You going to cry? Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, see, you're going to cry, huh? You're a big man now, huh? Dr. Hoogland. A member of our team of intelligence. Yeah, thought so. <laughs> Now, a few little technical facts. Don't abort people here, but a few technical facts. All right. Now, let me give you all the lowdown on... Dr. Hoogland. A member of our team of intelligence. In UFO Diaries. In the region designated as Sidonia. Dr. Hoogland. A member of our team of intelligence. I got a job in a carnival sideshow. In a Masonic Lodge. Eating broken glass. We did six shows a day. If we put this through a high-pass filter, which we've done, you really get spikes... In Motherfuckers! We filmed all 13 post sequences in, in two days. You can actually tell that there's a geometry of intelligence there. Colonel, you better take a look at this radar. What is it, son? I don't know, sir. But it looks like a giant dick. Yeah. Take a look out of starboard. Oh, my God. It looks like a huge... Pecker! Oh, yeah. Wait. That's not a wood pecker. It looks like someone's... Pirates! We have reports of an unidentified flying object. It is a long, smooth shaft, complete with two balls. What is that? That looks just like an enormous... Wang, pay attention. I was distracted by that enormous flying... Johnson, yes, sir. Get on the horn of intelligence. In a Masonic Lodge. And let them know about this. Dick. Who good? A member of our team of intelligence. He got away in that rocket that looks like a huge... Penis! The male reproductive organ... Also known as Tallywhacker, Schlong, or... Wiener? Any of you kids want another wiener? Dad, what's that? I don't know, son, but it's got great big nuts! Hot, salty nuts! Who wants them, Lord Almighty? That looks just like my husband's... One-eyed monster! Step right up and see the one-eyed monster! Ah! Hey, what's that? It looks like a big... Woody! Woody Harrelson? Can I have your autograph? Sure, no problem. <clears throat> oh, my Lord. Look at that thing. So big. Oh, I've seen bigger. That's just a little prick. Dick. Hoogland. That's a lot of broken glass.